everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today I have your WWE TLC 2018 full show predictions. As you guys know, these predictions videos, pretty much how they work, we just run through the entire card. I'm going to give you my opinion on every single match, what I think about the feud going on, give you what I think should happen and what will happen at the TLC pay-per-view on Sunday. Um, I'm actually looking forward to this show. I don't know why. You know, every time I get my hopes up, I just get very disappointed. But we're going to see how it goes. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of matches on this card. It's almost like a big four, it seems. But... Um, we're going to get into the show, guys. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first matchup that we have, guys, is the Season 2 Finals of the Mixed Match Challenge between Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox taking on R-Truth and Carmella. The winners of these matches are going to be number 30 in the Men's and Women's Royal Rumble. And you know what's pretty disappointing, guys? Uh, I thought that Finn Balor was going to be in the finals of this. I thought that Finn Balor and Bayley were going to win the Raw side of things, go on and defeat R-Truth and Carmella, and we were going to have Finn Balor and Bailey as the number 30 spots in the Royal Rumble. Wouldn't that be epic as crap? But no, they somehow, between uh, Monday Night Raw and Tuesday, they switched out Finn Balor for Apollo Crews, and Apollo Crews and Bailey went on to lose to Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox in the Mixed Match Challenge, and I guess that's just because Finn Balor already has a match, but why couldn't he just wrestle twice or something? Golly, I don't like this at all. This like, who who wants R-Truth as number 30, and who wants Jinder Mahal as number 30? I, I, I can't think of anybody that would want either of these men as number 30, and I guess Carmella and R-Truth are going to win. That's the only thing that I can go with. I'm going to go with R-Truth and Carmella winning, just because I can't see Alicia Fox and Jinder Mahal being number 30 in the Rumble. Um, I really don't see, you know, R-Truth being 30 in the Rumble, but you know what? That makes more sense than Mahal. So I'm going with R-Truth to win. Really disappointed it wasn't Finn Balor winning the thing. You know, he could have went on, been number 30, and won the Rumble. Rumble itself, but we'll just have to see what happens. Going with our truth and Carmella. Next up, we have a tables match between Natalia and Ruby Riot. And honestly, I don't really care much for about, about this match. I don't have any investment in this matchup, so I don't really care about it at all. However, I'm going to pick Ruby Riot. I think Ruby Riot needs it much more. You know, Natalia has been in the business a long time. She's been on the main roster forever now. She needs to be putting younger talent like Ruby Riot over here. And I think that Ruby Riot needs to win this thing by herself. I don't want the Riot squad getting involved. I want her to go out there, beat Natalya one-on-one -on -one in this tables match, get some more heel heat, and build her character a little bit more. So Ruby Riot, without a doubt, needs to win here, and that's all I'm going to say. Ruby Riot wins this table match. Next up, guys, we have a match, again, that I really do not care about. You know, Bobby Trashley has been on the main roster for a while now, and I am just, I am just not, I don't like his character, guys. He's very boring. His in-ring style is boring. I used to love him as a kid, but I guess it's because I was a kid, because I, I literally, it, he puts me to sleep. Even when he's a heel now, he's pretty boring like Leo Rush. I love Leo Rush to death. He was my favorite indie wrestler before he came to WWE, and they, them two just get on my nerves. I know they're supposed to be heels, and they're supposed to get on my nerves and stuff, but my God. And Elias, I love Elias. I think Elias is one of the most original characters in WWE. I think he has a great charismatic look about him. He, he's pretty good in the ring, you know, and I think he's getting better every week. So there's not, uh, without a doubt, he needs to win this matchup. Elias better win this matchup, my God. I, he really, really needs it here. Elias needs to win this, get some momentum, and go look after the Intercontinental Championship. That's what Elias needs in 2019. Some freaking gold around his waist. But somewhere along the line, guys, we got a ladder match. This is a ladder match with Elias's guitar hanging high above the ring, and um, I don't know. This this is just a weird gimmick to me. Um, hopefully, Elias can win this thing, and uh, hopefully, we get an entertaining matchup out of it. I mean, I, I enjoy Elias's work, so maybe he can pull a good match out of Bobby Lashley. Though Bobby Lashley did have a good match with Roman Reigns a while back, I think that Elias needs to do the same here with Bobby, and uh, he needs to win here. So I'm going to go with Elias winning. Hopefully, you know they love Bobby Lashley. They love pushing the big guy, but Elias is pretty big, and they need to give him a win here, so Elias is going to get some momentum and win this weird AF ladder guitar match. Next up, we have the Cruiserweight Championship match between my boy Cedric Alexander taking on Buddy Murphy, and I know that Cedric Alexander is not the Cruiserweight Champion, however, we have not gotten a Buddy Murphy figure yet, so he's going to hold on to it right now, and I believe that's the closest my boy is going to get to winning this thing on Sunday, because I think that they're going to keep the title on Buddy Murphy. You know, Buddy Murphy's been killing it. Uh, I mean, the whole roster, honestly, on 205 has been killing it, and I don't think they're going to take the momentum, uh, momentum off of him right now, even though I love Cedric, 
and I think that he should be. I think he should be competing on SmackDown Live as a as a mid to main event guy. I think he's that good in the ring, and obviously so is Buddy Murphy. Half the freaking 205 Live roster could be uh, mid card to main event guys on the main roster. I'm pretty sure, but Cedric Alexander is not going to win here. I think that they're going to keep some momentum on Buddy, and he's going to retain the championship. Hopefully, this match will be as good, if not better, than their recent matches. So I'm going to go with Buddy Murray. Murphy to retain, but I'm going to be supporting my boy Cedric. Next up, we have a singles match between Drew McIntyre and my boy Finn Balor. And this matchup, guys, I think it's safe to say that Finn Balor desperately needs this victory. He needs to come out here. I don't care if they bring up the Demon. You know, we got the Demon last year at TLC, and I think that, uh, you know, he's been pushed to the limit here. You know, he keeps getting beat up by multiple men and everything, so I, I guess they could pull the trigger on the Demon if they wanted to. You know, it would still keep Drew McIntyre looking strong since the Demon is undefeated on the main roster and everything. However, I don't think they're going to do it um, as awesome as it would be and incredible as it would be to have the Demon here. It's, it's not going to happen, but I'm going to go with Finn Balor just because I'm pleading and hoping that he'll win. I, I think that Dolph Ziggler gets involved here calls Drew McIntyre the matchup, and that's going to be the story moving forward. Hopefully this will thrust Finn Balor into either the Intercontinental Championship or Universal Championship picture. He just needs some momentum, and they have just made my boy look terrible. And hopefully uh, my boy Dolph comes down and calls Drew this matchup, and uh, maybe we'll get a good matchup between these two. Uh, maybe Drew will pull out some of his athletic over-the-top rope maneuvers here, and we'll get a high-flying style, style matchup. You know, the story's probably going to be the power of Drew, but he's proven that he can, he can fly around too. So hopefully we get an entertaining matchup out of this and not just your typical Raw matchup. I'm going with Finn Balor and I'm just pleading that they give him the W here on Sunday at TLC. Next up we have a chairs match between one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, Randy Orton, taking on Rey Mysterio here. And this one should be good. You know, their matchup at Crown Jewel in the Best in the World Tournament did not live up to the hype. I think it was because, you know, they were given a very short time limit. They weren't given enough time to really work and create a story here. So hopefully this match is much better and and I think that it will be. You know, with the element of chairs thrown in, the heel in Randy Orton should be able to get creative, and they should be able to do some wonderful things here. I think that Randy Orton needs this victory, especially with it being a stipulation matchup. He desperately needs to get this win. You know, he got beat at Crown Jewel, and I really hated that he lost at Crown Jewel. They could have, you know, it was, you know, seen as a live event, which I guess is why they gave him the L, but they could have given Rey Mysterio the L. I didn't like that he got the pinfall victory over Randy Orton's here, so I think that here at TLC, we should get a chairs match where a heel Randy Orton does dominate, maybe uh, goes beyond the bell and, you know, continues to work on Rey Mysterio and possibly even kayfabe injures Rey Mysterio or something like that to get that heel heat back on him and give him some more momentum, hopefully towards a uh, championship title run uh, later on in 2019. But I'm going to go with Randy Orton picking up the win here desperately because he needs it. So I'm going Randy Orton, my boy, to win this chairs match. Next is the TLC match between Braun Strowman and the general manager elect trash Corbin as I like to call him because he's absolutely awful he has gotten a lot better in the last year guys as he's moved up to constable I actually don't want to just rip my eyeballs out every time I look at him but he's still not good and he, he should not even come close to winning this matchup I don't think he will I think he will get legitimately buried here and uh, I think that we're going to get him taking some damage. You know, I, I put it in my setup yesterday of him getting buried by chairs and tables. And I think that's going to happen here. I think he'll legit bury him and uh, get, eat some power slams and get the victory. Even though Braun Strowman, I know the story is his elbow and the injuries that he's battling. But I don't think that's going to have an effect here. I think that he's going to Kevin Owens style bury Trash Corbin at TLC, get the victory, and go on to lose to Brock Lesnar again. I honestly am sick of seeing Braun Strowman in the Universal Championship picture. I feel like the ship sailed on him a long time ago, for me at least. I think that, you know, I, I, I was high on him last year, and they just kept delaying it and delaying it and delaying it. And then eventually now I do not care about Braun Strowman. I, I like him as a person and as a character, but uh, he's just boring to me. I don't want him as Universal Champion, and I, I just want I want a different guy in the picture. Him and Brock need to go away. Trash Corbin needs to just, I don't know, did, I, I guess be an authority figure, but not keep doing the same BS that he keeps doing over and over. I don't know, guys. Monday Night Raw's in shambles, but I'm going with Trash Corbin to lose here. Braun Strowman picks up the win and crushes 
Trash Corbin. Next up, guys, we have the Triple Threat Tag Team Match for the SmackDown Tag Team Titles between the Usos, the Champions, the Bar, and the New Day. And this matchup should be am amazing. I mean, it, on paper, this match has the makings to be the match of the night. And honestly, guys, it's a TLC pay-per-view, which is a terrible name for a pay-per-view. I hate the gimmick pay-per-view names. Give us some creative stuff like Armageddon, Judgment Day, Backlash-ish like that. But uh, besides the point, why isn't this a triangle TLC match or a ladder match or a tables match or anything like that? Can you imagine the carnage? They could pay respect and homage to Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys, the Dudley Boys in this matchup. Why do they have to give it no stipulation? I understand it's triple threat, but why not add a freaking table, a ladder, a chair? It is no disqualification, so we'll probably see those elements thrown in. However, what epicness would it be to have the titles hang high above the ring and have us an instant classic here at TLC? How hard is that? I don't know, guys. I know there's plenty of stipulation matches on the card, but that's ridiculous to me. I think that... If the pay-per-view name is TLC, then all of the matches should have either a table, ladder, or chair thrown in the mix. The rest of the matches, I'm pretty sure, besides one or two, have a stipulation. So I think that it would have been amazing to have a TLC stipulation here, but they missed the opportunity. Um, honestly, I, this thing could go either way. I mean, the New Day, they just dropped the title, so I don't think they should win. The Bar could easily retain here um, and, and, you know, go on to see what we can see. But I think the Usos, I think it's the Usos' time to take the tag title. So I'm going to go with the Usos winning here and hopefully we do get some you know things thrown in here with some weapons and some cool spots and I'm, I'm excited for this matchup a lot so hopefully they give us a great classic tag team match and uh, we, we remember it for years to come so I'm gonna go with the Usos winning and an instant classic next we have the Raw Women's Championship match between the champion Rowdy Ronda Rousey taking on Nia Jax and honestly, guys, we saw this matchup a few months back, and uh, it wasn't good. I, I don't like Nia Jax as a character. I think she's very green in the ring. I don't like her style. I don't like her promo. I am very annoyed with her, how she flip-flops like Big Show, turning face and heel every other week. And Ronda Rousey should win this matchup in five minutes, and I don't think it should be close, even though I know they're going to make it competitive, and uh, Ronda Rousey has gotten so much better in the ring, guys. I really thoroughly enjoyed her and Charlotte's matchup at Survivor Series. Match of the night. I'm pretty sure at that pay-per-view, but uh, Ronda Rousey here should retain the championship. I don't think she's going to drop it anytime soon. It should be around Mania 35 before she even looks at a loss. So I'm going to go with uh, Ronda Rousey retaining, and Nia Jax should go far, far away from the women's championship picture on Monday Night Raw. Now here's a matchup that I'm looking forward to, guys. The triple threat TLC match for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship between my girl Becky Lynch, my girl Asuka, and Charlotte Flair. And my God, should this one be an instant classic. You know, you have the three best women in the entire company going head to head to head here. And I honestly, I, I think that Becky Lynch needs to win. I think that she needs to come out on top given that, you know, all the momentum and the character she's built up this year and just working so hard and everything. Um, and everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon now. I've been on Becky Lynch for, for years now. And now you're going to try and come over here and tell me you love Becky Lynch. You get out of here, Brad. But, um, um, anyways, this matchup should probably be match of the night. It has the makings to be, and it has the makings to be the best women's match on the main roster all year, and it should be great. I am very much looking forward to it. I'm very hyped, and um, all three of these women know how to work. They know how to tell a story, and I can't wait for it. I'm going to go with Becky Lynch retaining just because I'm going to be hoping for that, and if uh, Becky Lynch doesn't win, then it needs to be Asuka, and it needs to, you know, Asuka should have never lost. She should still be undefeated as women's champion right now if she doesn't have to lose to Mrs. Perfect Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 34, but you know it is what it is, and I'm going to go with Becky Lynch. Let's go, Becky, win this thing and uh, prove your dominance. Next is the Intercontinental Championship match between my boy Seth freaking Rollins and Dean Me Machine Ambrose as my stupid self likes to call him here on the channel, but this matchup needs a stipulation, guys, as the you know, this rivalry has been bitter. Um, the heel turn on Seth on the night of Roman Reigns' announcement and everything leading up to this matchup, why doesn't this have a stipulation. I'm looking at it here. No, it doesn't have a stipulation. Like, come on, man. They should have totally added at least a ladder. This this match should be at least a ladder match. I think it would be incredible to see these two go head-to-head. -head. We've seen it a hundred times in the past. The chemistry between the two is obviously off the charts, and I'm looking forward to just seeing how this plays out. I think that Dean Ambrose is going to do it. I think he's going to finally overcome Seth here. He's going to dethrone him, take over the Intercontinental Championship. I think this is where we start to see the build towards WrestleMania, and I think that 
Dean Ambrose is going to win the IC title, and we're going to start building some sympathy for Seth Rollins so that he can go on to win the Royal Rumble and go on to fight whoever's the Universal Champion at WrestleMania. So I think that it has to start here, and I'm going to go with Dean Ambrose prying the Intercontinental title away from Seth, and we're going to see a new champion in Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins is going to start building up his little uh, sympathy, and we're going to see him overcome the odds and win the Royal Rumble to go on to Mania and fight for the Universal title. So I'm going with Dean Mean Machine to be your new Intercontinental Champion. And the last matchup we have on the card, guys, and the match that absolutely should main event, given that the Universal Championship is not on this card, the WWE Championship match between Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles. And this matchup doesn't have a stipulation either. I can understand that, I guess. Um, you know, not all matches should have stipulations. I guess if any of them aren't going to have one, this would be the one. And we got AJ Styles trying to regain his WWE Championship that he lost on SmackDown Live. I don't think he's going to, guys. I think he's going to lose this matchup here, and we're going to get some new champions in the picture, most likely. Um, the Miz is probably going to get interfered somehow in this thing. I mean, uh, who knows what's going to happen. I think that Daniel Bryan will retain, though, and um, he could possibly... Uh, I don't think so. I don't think he'll submit AJ. It's possible, but I don't know. I think Miz gets involved here, and we're going to have Daniel Bryan retain the championship and that's uh, that's it for TLC, guys. Daniel Bryan will retain his WWE Championship versus AJ Styles. And I honestly don't know what to expect going into Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble is my favorite pay-per-view of the year. And so we're going to kick off 2019 like we always do with a epic Royal Rumble. Hopefully, it uh, I can't wait for it. Roy Royal Rumble season going into Mania is my favorite time of the year. You know, you get Elimination Chamber, you get the Rumble, and you get all kinds of good stuff going into Mania. So it should be interesting to see what unfolds here. Monday Night Raw has been absolutely atrocious, guys. I don't know how anybody can sit there for three hours and watch all this filler garbage and have them treat all their talent like absolute dog crap. So hopefully after TLC rolling into the Rumble, we get some more entertaining television given their ratings are absolutely awful and in the dirt and the worst they've ever been right now. So maybe they'll switch some stuff up and we'll have some entertaining TV. I don't put it past them though. Um, I'm not going to get my hopes up, but I can only hope, right? But that does it for your TLC 2018 predictions, guys. Last pay-per-view of 2018. Hopefully it goes out with a bang. I'm excited for the show. Like I said, maybe we'll get some cool attires and some cool customs that we can make out of this thing. But that does it for today's video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Comment down below your predictions for TLC. Are you hyped for the show or do you think it's going to be crappy? Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE and WWE figure-related videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.